Hey, hey, folks, can you guys hear me? Perfect. Awesome. So, hey, we're about to start up here in about two minutes. I'm super excited. Just to give you guys a quick rundown, um, I should, maybe I should wait, but anyway, we'll go through it. So our group has um, something like 24 hours of playtime right now. I am a level 18 rogue. That is the highest level on the server. Uh, I think the next highest group is another faceless group. So it's going pretty well. Uh, we're going to be going through like today's, you know, the concept for today's stream is uh, basically that we will be grinding the way we would for like a static EQ launch. Um, and we knocked out all the newbie stuff, so you won't see all the boring crap. We are going to be going through what is currently one of the highest level uh, camps available to us. It's kind of like sort of reminds me of Crushbone. And I will turn the game video on here in just a second. Hi, Ike. Good to see you, man. Yeah, it is still in dev. What's going on? What's going on, Guth Wolf? Good to see you, Slazic, everybody. And it looks like it's time. Let's show what we're doing. Good to see you all. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hopefully you are ready for a nice three hour long stream. You guys ready? All right, let's start pools. So this is my character right now. I just swapped from a dual wield build into a two handed spear build. Uh, we have a team of people who like all they do is work on crafting. So we have some pretty good crafted gear. This two handed long spear we think will be the best DPS that I can get in the current uh, game. That pull went very questionably. So this is like supposed to be the most challenging camp that we can access here. We're going to see. Triple thrust is not that great, it looks like. Hey, thanks for the raid. Thank you very much. I hope your stream went super well, dude. I was watching uh, off to the side as we were playing. It looked like you were having a lot of fun. I saw you guys in the Goblin Caves. So hopefully it was a big success. What level did you finish at? What's going on, folks? Good to see everybody here. Pope, long time no see. Fett, good to see you here. Crazy dropped frames. We'll see what we could do. Close all this junk. In the game, I'm actually getting a really good frame rate. Is my audio choppy as well? It's better now. Okay, we'll see. Twitch doesn't always want to cooperate with us. It is, and I have like the settings all basically down to the minimum, so it could look a lot nicer, but you guys can see the, the internet connection I'm rocking isn't the greatest in, in the first place. So let's talk about the class and everything right now. Uh, as a rogue, it's not exactly like the EQ rogue where you're really locked into daggers. Up until this point, I have been using a ton of uh, blunt main hand because it was the best weapon available to me. It was a drop from a rare orc and a piercing offhand. And with that, I was using a certain set of abilities. Now that I have this two-handed spear, we're trying it out, but I have to use a totally different, uh, basically, ability rotation for optimized DPS. In here, we can look at this codex. You can see I have a ton of abilities already at level 18. Some of them are grayed out. Those are grayed out because you either require a sword or a blunt weapon to use them. And likewise, before, we were grayed out on a lot of the piercing attacks. We are getting a lot of mobs, though. 
Yeah, so when I was using the hammer, I was not backstabbing. I was using an, an ability called waylay, which is kind of like you're just clubbing someone in the back of the head. It requires a blunt weapon and it is really good. So the cornerstone of this, this looks like it's going poorly, guys. The cornerstone of the build is you go into like a stealth mode, which lets you get opportunity. These four little check marks up here by my name. And then you use Sinister Strikes, which consumes everything and gives me a damage bonus on my next hit based on how many opportunity points it consumes. It's 25% for each opportunity point. So when I'm in stealth, I regenerate it really quickly. So now watch the little, uh, well, we have 13 seconds. I'll actually just wait so we can see. The two abilities that we really want to mess with here are triple thrust, which lets me deal 60% uh, of my normal weapon damage, but I do three attacks, and backstab, which is 300% of my weapon damage. And they're based on different, uh, different core stats. Backstab is strength-based. And uh, triple stab is, triple thrust is dex based. Right now my strength, I, I want to say is higher. Yeah, my strength is pretty significantly higher just to, because of some gearing opportunities we had. So it might be better to focus on backstab. But it does feel nice to use a two-handed piercer. So my backstab just did 520 damage out of stealth with Sinister Strikes. Alavaz, how's it going, dude? Yeah, Shucks in the group. We got Shucks, Biggs, Glorf, Xenix, all people uh, pretty much who have been in Faceless before, but not all from Mischief. Grab and we'll see. I'm not committed to saying that, you know what I mean? But the test is actually happening. Well, you know, Pirate, it's all on a scale. Like, you can see... 520 damage backstab is not doing a ton of damage to these guys. Everything is just like, you know, numbers are all fake, right? It's all relative. Yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm getting more DPS out of backstab. I just critical that backstab without Sinister Strikes for 496. But in the end, you know, it's, I'm not trying to get too caught up on this. We don't have a log file, so I can't parse it unless I like go back and count everything on a video, which is pretty agonizing. So for the most part, you know, it feels fine. We'll roll with it. Um. What else? What else do we have here? We have blackjack kick. So this is good because it lets me refill my opportunity bar. It gives me two more. Um, we have corrosive brew. Basically, I throw this toxin on them and it reduces their AC by, I want to say, 15%. The tooltip's wrong. Spear seems good. The problem is I think waylay is better than backstab. So we'll hide. My spear skill is maxed. Triple thrust seems worse than backstab. No, you, you roll both. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Maybe cumulatively, um, my triple stab and my backstab are more than waylay was. It was just waylay and the current rotation I'm running, basically. So triple is is raw bonus. Yeah, so with the addition of like another attack that does significant damage, this is actually probably way better. What's going on, Arvis? Good to see you. Fec Nimitz. Hey, what's going on, dude? I don't know. Mastery points are in. So check it out. I have uh, this is my mastery bar. You gain mastery for every kill, basically. Uh, I want to say it's 100 points or 100 kills to fill up the bar. I currently have four mastery points. Um, like I said, we've been playing for over 20 hours. H how many hours do we have in the group, guys?
the group says 23. So we got 23 hours to get to level 18 here going relatively hardcore, but you know, we are not like hyper, hyper optimized. So we have this tab over here. Let's what's a good one. Waylay. We'll look at Waylay. You go to this mastery tab and you can spend those mastery points that you accumulate. Now, it, it just gives you three different tiers of improving your ability. Tier one reduces the cooldown. That's great. Tier two increases the damage significant. And then tier three is it puts another thing on off of cooldown every time you successfully use it. A lot of these have have really good things like this. So that's what you use your mastery points for. I have four right now. And um, I don't even know. It's, it's questionable what I would use them for at this point. Because uh, the other thing that I haven't maxed out is waylay. I'm not using it anymore. Backstab. Okay, we can mastery backstab. Yeah, so we'll do that. I can't do it while I'm in combat. I was like hitting the button. I'm like, why is this not working? Then I looked over and I realized, yeah, so. And we have the classic problem of EverQuest rogues here, which is if your DPS is constantly pulling aggro, then you can't land your backstabs. It's going really well. Halbert, good to see you, dude. I think since I'm streaming this right now, like obviously you guys know I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm doing pre-alpha testing. Um, I can probably say that I've been pre-alpha testing since the beginning and through the various iterations that we've seen, because it has changed significantly over the years. Um, it has felt more and less like EQ at different times, like PA1 felt almost exactly like EverQuest the very first sessions. Now I would say it feels a lot more like Vanguard. I will tell you that. Um, there we go. So now I need three more to max this out. This should be pretty significant now. Six hundred and thirty eight. Yes. So your abilities come in two flavors, basically, in terms of what they consume. They either consume readiness, which is this white bar up here, basically endurance and EQ. Um, but it's much faster to regenerate and to spend than, than endurance is. And then the other one is your class specific ability, which is uh, opportunity. And you're, you're balancing them with your cooldowns like this blackjack kick gives me more opportunity. But by the way, how's everyone been? Uh, Twitch told me that it has been six months since I last streamed. Sorry about that. I think our last stream was like the Extra Life, the Extra Life like charity stream that we were doing. And funny enough, Dark Paws starting their Extra Life uh, charity foundation stuff again. Swap to this. Yeah, Backstab's doing like 700 damage now that I have upgraded it with Mastery Points. Yeah, it's, it's pretty big. Where's Frank? I, I miss what you said, Frank. You know, it's hard to... Uh, follow chat and like not be terrible for my group because it's a bit more of an active gameplay kind of game. But let's see. So the other classes have to like meditate and stuff, but going into stealth for me, or I guess they call it shadow walk, basically fulfills the same function, which is pretty cool. So I don't have to have like strict downtime. These monks that we're fighting are not too terrible, but you'll see every now and then we pull a, a mob called a mentalist. 
the mentalists have like this have a pretty active AI. So they'll come in, they'll try to AE stun us, they'll start mezzing people, they try to mez the healer more often. Then if you do anything to affect them with magic, they have a spell called Hush. So they'll like they'll hold their hush until you try to uh, drain their mana or like mess them and they'll cast their hush when they see you start your cast. If they see somebody in their team who is like mez, like if we pulled a monk and a mentalist, we mez the monk, he will attempt to resolve a spell that wakes up the monk. I'm scared to click this link, Frank. Badzilla says, as someone who has always who has never looked into Pantheon at all, I've always been told it's the true spiritual successor to original EQ. Yeah, yes. Yes, uh, Frank, I think your comment's correct. I don't know if this is a spiritual successor to EQ. It's its own, it's its own game, totally. Who do we have here? Tweedle, level eight. Honestly, it's kind of impressive just to see someone here. To get over here, you have to like do a lot of climbing. Basically, you start up like down there, you climb there, come over here, climb along this, up, over, and come up. Oh, eventually up over here. So we don't expect to see anybody at these camps. And I don't think any other group is really in a position to like come contest this. Is my FPS if my FPS is looking bad, I think it is it's just the uh the stream. I'm sitting at 130 FPS right now. You can see the counter in the top left of my screen. Yeah, so that might just be a stream lag thing. What's going on, Nits? Long time no see. I feel like it's been years since we talked. How are you doing? Yeah, the combat feels great. It feels really great. I'll say that like at the lower levels, it, it felt less great. But it's because, you know, at any game when you start the lower levels, like I don't have a, a whole suite of abilities, so you're kind of bare bones. And when things go wrong, your whole group has like a relatively small kit for how they can flex and handle things. But I would say probably around like level 12, people start to really have all their core abilities in some form and can really do things. And then in like the, the low to mid teens, it seems like we all started getting debuff kind of abilities, which make it easier to tackle like harder content. In the early levels, if you are trying to do stuff like, um, like if you're trying to fight a retcon at the lower levels, you have basically no chance. Because you just can't land hits. You can't do any damage to them at all. Um, but once you have things like the, like the equivalent for like Tash and Mallow, and things that reduce their AC, it becomes much more reasonable. Sure, Weeds, thanks for the sub. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what's up. I mean, that's, that's like more internet connection than game. My FPS is super high right now. Yeah, and it's, I don't know. Who knows how long it will be, but the the gameplay that you get to experience when you're testing is very fun. Is it basically mostly grindy based like EQ or are there some quests? There's a lot of quests, um, but I think it is intended to be a camp based game. Like you go to a camp, you pull for a couple hours. You know what I mean? It wants to have that aspect of EQ. It's definitely not going to be like do your dailies kind of like wow or rift style MMO. Don't tab out of the game. OK. Yeah, I don't think the options has like a background FPS setting like EQ has right now. So it looks like when I do triple thrust, each one of my thrusts could crit independently. Yeah, but like what are the chances of a triple crit? Uh, Rip Daft Punk, I, I have heard of Monsters and Memories. The same team that plays this and Faceless also messes with that game. Super Suit Guy, are we going to play the new TLP? Nah, I'm going to stay on Mischief. Our Mischief Guild is just so much fun and we're getting into like some of the best content in EQ. I really, really like it. It's pretty good. It is a two-handed rogue, Crycheck. I know, dude. 
two handed rogue and EQ would be awesome. They're really versatile. So there's like you have all the standard rogue piercing stuff. Um, some abilities you get require like only daggers. Some require only blunt weapons. Some require slashing weapons. So there are definitely different things that you can do and different builds you can go with. You're not necessarily locked into only using whatever is the current best piercing weapon. Which is one of the downsides to, to what EQ always felt like. And I think it's kind of still like that right now on Mischief, at least in, in the Buried Sea. Like maybe an offhand, you could have a good blunt weapon, but your main hand is always going to be a, a piercing weapon in EQ. Kagan, what are we aren't racing? No, Kag, I can't. So I, I would like to do the Oakland launch, just the one to 50 rush. Um, but I couldn't secure childcare, you know what I mean? And I'm not comfortable doing like a, a big, um, a big like 24 hour kind of gameplay session where my wife just has to like watch our ch our child the entire time. So we're trying to break into this camp. It's pretty big. There's like two tiers to it. But rather than go through the front and fight all the way through basically a ton of trash, we're going to go around, sneak through the back. I need to mess with my toolbar here in a sec. So there's a new boss that was added to the game, like with the, the patch this morning, I guess. And we are trying to get to that boss. I think calling it a boss might be like a misnomer. It might be more of just like a high level named. Like uh, Nashra, which you guys might have seen if you watched the old Pantheon streams, that was more like a boss, right? There's mechanics, there's dodging AEs, taking care of ads um, and all that stuff. I would be surprised if we saw that from this named. Thanks, Keg. Nothing will ever come close to the group we did on Mischief, dude. Hey, Minus, thank you. Nit, Nits, we're in uh, the Buried Sea. You should definitely come play with us. We would love more Enchanters. Yeah, so Mojo, let's, yeah, I should go over the classes, right? I'm a rogue. We have Biggs over here, aka Finchy, who is a monk. We have Kumu, who is our shaman. I'm dead. Rip. That's what I get for pulling aggro and not paying attention. Back up. There we go. So when you when you you go down, if you've ever played D&D, &D, it's kind of like that. Like you can get to like negative 10. You know what I mean? If I get healed, I can come back up. That's pretty much where we're at. This guy, we have some aggro on it. I train what's going on. I probably am missing a ton of like uh, things in the chat. I apologize. I'm terrible. TBS is good, but more important than TBS being good, SOF is great. Yeah. I don't know what level we, we get. Do we start with uh, dual wield? Hey, do we start with dual wield on rogues and monks? Yeah, level one here, we had it. So this game has a sprint button. When I sprint, you see I have like these yellow bars that slowly go down. Normally, they go down much faster than this. But I have a ton of stuff that gives me like more uh, climbing speed, more endurance and stuff, which lets me do it longer. Plus, we have the good old Wind Strider, a.k.a. Spirit of Wolf, which makes me run faster and gives me more endurance. So this is the camp. We're going to clear some trash and then we're going to slip through this crack in the gorge over here. What's going on, Zygor? Good to see you, dude. Let me show you guys a quick exploit. Don't tell anyone in Pantheon staff. So normally when you when you sneak when you sneak here, you have to walk all slow, right? But if you are sprinting and then you mouse click sneak, you can move at sprint speed while sneaking. Normally you cannot sneak and sprint at the same time. So let's actually we should talk about sneaking. Sneaking is different in this game. Sneak like the sneak hide kind of mechanic. It reduces the aggro radius that 
that mobs have for me, but mobs have different uh, different ways they can detect you. They can smell you, they can see you, and they can hear you. Sneaking makes me harder to see. There are some spells that make me more quiet, so I'm harder to hear. I don't know if we have a way to get around NPCs that de that detect you via smell, though, which is like sneaking up on a bear could be very challenging, right? Because it smells me. These guys are going to be all kind of like uh, sight and sound. It's cool when you think about it, but it's like also it can be a lot to track. You know what I mean? What is this little thing over here? Recently revived. Yeah, so don't be an ogre rogue. Can you guys hear the game sounds at all? Do you have to bathe? Is there a soap making trade skill? There are a lot of trade skills. Uh, I don't think you have to bathe, but you do have to harvest everything. So like an EQ, you might get ore from like farming mud ice or something, for example. But here there will be like ore deposits or like trees and you have to like chop the trees down and, and collect ore by mining the ore deposits. So it's definitely different in that way. I think if you're like a person who likes trade skilling a lot or you're like really into like Minecrafty kind of things, you would really enjoy it. Personally, you guys know me. Uh, we assign someone to do to take care of that. We send them all of our materials and that's the last I think about it. We have a team that is like in town. All they do is craft. When we go back, we give them all of our, our materials or they'll send a runner to pick up stuff. And they're just like exploring all the different uh, the different recipes and everything, finding cool things. Um, there are trains. Yeah, there are trains. The the one thing that we take advantage of right now is that if mobs can't get to you, eventually they'll just be like, OK, we're done. So if our pooler gets too much before he has FD, he'll jump up a wall and climb. And if those mobs can't climb, they'll eventually just fuck off. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the F word during this sponsored stream. I apologize. You can't hide who you are, OK? Not good. Your opening attack does a 600 damage crit immediately pulls aggro. Good, good. No, you don't send. You have to you have to meet up with someone right now. Right. No, I you know, the thing is, it's like all voluntary. So we have um, we have obviously we have a discord full of all the people who have access to pre alpha that are in faceless. And there's different people with different interests. Some people are like, OK, you know, this testing session is going to be 24 hours. We're going to play for 24 hours straight. We're going to grind and be the highest levels we can. That's people like Kegs in our Discord. He's usually like the top leveler. Should be surprising to no one if you know Kegadin. Um, but then we have other people who are like, I want to go map out the zone. And they'll just like go around and explore things the entire time. And then at the end, we have like a hand-drawn map because there is no map key, right? There's never going to be a map in Pantheon. And we have other people. So we're just trying to like explore every facet of it. So after... Um, even just like one or two tests, we'll have the maximum amount of information possible every time. Right, Goofy. Yeah, it looks pretty good, right? I mean, it is really fun. It's definitely way harder to manage like all these abilities while trying to keep up with chat. You know, Matt, uh, Frank, I do find myself constantly pressing the M button. Also, the game is super vertical. Like when we were first scouting this out, I climbed up this wall, went over here and I was able to like look beyond to see what was going on over there. And like, I think from that waterfall, you could probably see like a huge like 20 mile radius. I do not know if it would drag me along the current, Ellie. I'm not sure if like the full water physics suite is in yet. I would hazard a guess that it would not. It doesn't look like it drags us. Oh, yeah, I jeez, I, I didn't even finish telling you what the group was. OK, Glorf is our Shadow Knight. He's our tank. I'm the rogue. Shucklighter is an enchanter. Biggs is a monk, Kumu is a shaman, and Xenox is a wizard. It's not the super optimal group, 
but we wanted to make sure that we would represent like most of the classes we could. I think the only class missing from this is cleric. We went with shaman. We think right now shamans are overall a more powerful uh, healer. The buffs are just really good with haste and like buffs that increase our attack abilities and all that other stuff. It's hard to say no to the shaman in the current form. Oh, Joppa is in the chat, folks. Feel free to ask him questions. Thanks for coming, Joppa. So I assume a topographical map is kind of like a Tolkien style map, like when you open the Lord of the Rings book, you know, you see you see that map there and it's just sort of a static thing. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's mileage may vary with what they prefer on that, if they like it. But like if if you're targeting the EQ classic demographic, then that's definitely the way to go. You can see over here in this chat box. Um, when we kill these guys, we are getting like faction hits and stuff. Queen Amenthiel has improved. Throne Fast has improved. Yeah, so that's like the Queen of Throne Fast, the guards and the citizens. Gadai gets worse. Pharaoh Clan gets worse. Black Rose has improved. So I think the Pharaoh Clan is the, the literal family that... Um, it's a terrible jump. I'm going to try to try to climb this. OK, I think the Pharaoh family is kind of like uh, if you imagine Fippy Darkpaw, he's part of the Sabretooth Knolls, but the Darkpaw family is like the uh, top family of the dark of the Sabretooth Knolls. That's kind of like the Pharaoh clan, I think, runs. Oh, shoot, I'm about to run out of endurance here for climbing. I think they run the Gadai Bandits. And do we want to avoid pulling to this spot for too long because of uh, chaining aggro through the fence? I mean, once we clear out that tent over to the north, is there any reason not to just stand in the road and pull straight down to us? Do we know? We probably it's a variable respawn, right? So respawns in this game are variable, which means you can't like set a timer and be like, OK, in 10 minutes, this will repop, which makes it a little bit more challenging. Yeah, this is a uh, unity based, I believe it was refactored a couple years ago and they basically rebuilt it, um, but I believe it is still unity based. Joppa would know for sure. God, I'm such a scrub forgetting to be in sneak mode. Is Glorf AFK? The Red Skull dude is an ogre. I'm a halfling. And Biggs is a human. That's a gnome over here with the yellow mask. I think everyone else is a human. Yes, faction matters much like already. Um, if the if our ogre dire lord, which is kind of like a shadow knight, if he goes into like the main city out there, the guards attack him. But if we farm these uh, these guys enough, they will not attack him. So it's it's definitely big. This is the effect that you can see when someone is mesmerized, that floating clock in front of their face. Don't kill me, dog. Yeah, I, I think I had like a double crit on my triple spear. The tech stack, yes, yeah, far beyond my abilities. So to go over a few of our other abilities here, we already showed blackjack, backstab. This is reducing AC. This attack, umbral edge, will do bonus damage, and then it reduces the accuracy of the enemy for 24 seconds. Um, triple thrust, more damage. Shadow planning. This is basically like I could take a, a mob, I could focus on it, and I'll do more damage and have a better chance to crit on that mob. Uh, 
for basically the whole time that mob's alive. So it's good for like when you're going to fight a boss. Here we have Gut Blow. This is a crushing technique, so I can't use it anymore now that I don't have a, a club. And it reduces the agility of the enemy, which makes us, you know, makes it easier for us to hit them. It's really effective against those monks that you saw us fighting before because they're mostly an avoidance based uh, class. Are we going to pull the tent mobs over there next? Give me a heads up before we start and I'll put some traps down. So the other thing the rogue can do is we have traps. Um, I have two on my bar right now that I like to use. This one is, a, is called Caltrops. I throw it down and it snares any mob that runs on it. This is an explosive trap. That just does a bunch of fire damage when they run on it. It's good and bad, like good for me to do more damage. Bad for me to do a bunch of damage while mobs are incoming because they're going to come try to kill me and I don't have a lot of health. Yeah, there's a, a blinding trap and I think a rooting trap. I don't use the root trap because we have a lot of CC in the group already and um, the root breaks on damage predictably. So. No, no, look at look, my spear is so good. It's off to the side. It looks like it would be really heavy, though. So yeah, this is cool. Um, I think like the gnomes, the way they look right now, obviously not the final intention. The lore with the gnomes, I believe they did something. They were doing some kind of crazy experiment and it caused them to basically lose their physical bodies. And now they are souls and energy that has been bound to this, this mask and the armor. Wash my spear when I'm in combat. Will do. Right now, you can see everybody's mana. You can see everyone's buffs. I didn't even know I could tooltip on everyone's buffs. But this is our enchanter right here, Shuck. He's really low on mana, so we have a lot of pathers that come through here. Looks like we're going. Set my trap. Snared that guy while we got a mez off. Mez broke early. These guys are high level. I think they're like level 22 ish. So it's relatively challenging for our group, even though our gear is pretty good. Hey, Erie, good to see you. I'm glad you're happy to see it. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I'm not a sneaky rogue, OK? I'm like a I'm like a pikeman. He's stunned. Did you see that? So if you look over his head, you'll see the names of the spells he's casting. Like that one he was he was casting fiery explosion was an AE that would have hit all of us, but you can interrupt him. Specific lore. What lore would you like? What's up, Ziplocks? First time chatter. Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I was super excited and I'm very thankful that they chose me as one of the streamers for this session. I've got like a Dragoon vibe. Yeah, I can see that. You talking about like a Final Fantasy Tactics Dragoon? Oh, this is a good time to use our exploit. Sprint and sneak. Joppa, that reminds me. You guys should add like a jump attack for two-handed spear. That'd be awesome. All right, somebody requested specific lore, but I need to know what specific lore you want. It's not good. Get off me. Add. I backed up too far like a baddie. So our casters have some regents they can use to get mana back, kind of like a mod rod. They're called uh, it's some sort of crystal. I think I have one in my inventory. I can show you. Kill this thing really quick. Thank goodness. We can't get our mess to stick on this. 
probably a combination of its level and being a magician, it's got higher magic resist. So do I have a crystal? Yeah. So this, a condensed mana crystal, which can be made by wizards, I believe. It, you consume it and you regain 20% 20, 20 of your mana. So it's kind of like a mod rod. Hey, are the condensed crystals from Xenix or are they from Shuck? Yeah, so it's, it's from the wizard, which is nice to see the wizard get some love and not be uh, like just raw DPS. I think we do have a threat reduction skill. I'm just bad. So I have escape artist. I can throw a smoke bomb, automatically activates my, my sneak and ends combat. Basically, I have a, a fade. I have not tried to use it because our group has been pretty stable. I'll try to use it here and see what happens. What does it consume? Three opportunity. So it'll be hard to get that opportunity. Okay, I got it immediately. Out of combat. Okay, yeah, so it's uh, pretty reliable. Cooldown is five minutes, though. Pretty reasonable. Orange, I, I would like to try it if I have the time. I would love to race that. The big guy's sunburn. Oh, the, the ogre. I don't know if all ogres are red. That might just be how they are. Before you end, can you show off some climbing? Yeah, I 100% will, nerds. Well, I'm playing at like the bare minimum settings, so that could be a factor. Got hit by a guy heavy. The climbing is really fun. It's a it's a bit challenging though. Um, learning how to climb well, I've died like 5,000 times. Yeah, it's escapes, Avin. That's a good point. Um, only if you're encumbered, I think, Village. Yeah, it's got jaundice. I'm going to show you guys some climbing really quick while my group is farming EXP for me. It's like we're totally out of mana over there on our enchainer. I don't know if I can. Sit to regain a little bit. And we'll go up there. Yeah, the ogre is a dire lord. So we're trying to get up in here. Um, I think there's, there we go. Heltic is like one of the leaders of the Pharaoh clan. So we're, we're going to try to get there and kill her. But she is not the new boss. I think the new boss is in here somewhere. Which direction inside this fence is the new boss? Yeah, it's behind this tree. There he is. Jugo Mountain Pojax. That's our target right now. Now to uh, get down without dying. There we go. Sweat in there. Um, you could climb like sideways and then go down. 
Um, or you can do what I did, where you just backpedal, because in mid freefall, you can grab the wall. Looks like he could be the next pull, right? Yeah, move towards the ledge while holding shift parachute. Um, AJ, I don't think I'm going to play uh, Oakwind. Streaks, good to see you, dude. Long time no see. I can give you lore stories on Pantheon right now, my man. What do you want to know? Oh, no. Did you see that backflip that the monk here did? When he did that, it gave him like a massive temporary avoidance. And it was like right as I was pressing my, my big uh, backstab cooldown. So I missed. So the main concept. Yeah, let's talk about it. OK, so we're in a world called Terminus. That's what the civilized races call it. But way before we got here, it was ruled by dragons. There were different factions of dragons that all warred. And then one dragon kind of was powerful enough to unite them all by, you know, killing anyone who opposed him. They dominated the lands for a long time. And then randomly one day, some power, some unknown power from outside of the world made a deal with him called the Dragon Accords. And we don't know the exact specifics of that deal. But all the dragons basically kind of left. They went to some place that is either like far away or various places that are very hard to get to. And after that, other races started arriving one by one in the world. Now, I believe they're like it's called a collision. So races will arrive in this world by uh, we're going to get an ad from behind here, I think they'll there will be some kind of magical event and then suddenly like boom a new race has arrived and when they come they lose connections to their deity i believe i think that's part of like the dragon accord people don't know why or how but that's like what's assumed is that part of the deal is that races that come here they get transported here more or less against their will and they lose connection to their gods so they come in one at a time and now we've got like seven or eight different races here that are like the playable races that are here. And then there are some like non-playable races. One race that came ended up turning their their king into like a god king. He became super powerful and waged war against all the other races and almost killed them all. They created these areas called sanctums, which were basically like these huge magical barriers where they could continue to live. And while they were in there, they just tried to wait them out. Eventually, six entities called the War Wizards came and led the other races in a battle against him. And uh, eventually, the battle reached this this area where that dragon that signed the Dragon Accords came back and he he fought the God King, killed the God King, I think, relatively effortlessly. And then he was going to annihilate the rest of the races. Some mysterious figure appeared that that figure from the outside. Was this tree always here? I feel like I didn't notice this tree before. Did one of you guys make an illusion tree? I'm blind. Um, so anyway, he. He was going to destroy everybody. And that mysterious figure appeared and he said, hey, you know, it's it's blood for blood. The pact has not been broken and the dragon kind of acquiesced left. And we're sort of there now. All the races that we currently see, except for halflings, were around for that. Halflings came after all that. I think that was called like the deicide war. But a big part of this is exploring why all of these races have like lost their connection to their gods, why they've been transported to Terminus in the first place. Um, and trying to understand like what happened to the dragons, what's going on with the dragon accords. There are cults of people who are seeking out dragons to try to like figure it out and serve them. So all kind of good lore stuff like that. That's the overar overarching, uh, I think, look at it. Hey, Paul, what's going on, dude? 
I don't know if I'm back. I'm back for this. And yeah, War Wizard was Brad McQuaid's first game. If you if you like kind of look at a lot of times if you talk to him about stuff like that, he would say like the class that he was going to play was War Wizard. It was like, you know, a one of one class. That's why he played like uh, in, in EQ. He played a ranger that had the Paladin Epic Sword. I don't think we'll ever see a War Wizard class in, in Pantheon. But it was definitely like Brad McQuaid's class. Oh, Zavin, thank you for the gifted subs. Very much appreciated, dude. Hey, I would encourage folks. Sorry about the frame right there. I think it's like when I tabbed out to mess with Twitch chat. Um, I would encourage folks that instead of subbing to me or donating to me, you guys consider in the about section, there should be a link to Extra Life. Donate to them so we can help kids who need it. I need to see what's going on with this frame rate. It's not my frame rate, it's OBS. My bitrate is showing green right now. It's up here. Yeah, in OBS, my bitrate's showing like good to go, 5,000. But for some reason, Twitch is not liking it. 278 week. The graphics, I have the graphics set to like the absolute minimum. I want to like move fast, never have any lag, all that kind of stuff. Um, and like when we're like when we're like logging into the server, when sessions open, I want to like get in really quickly um, because I am stupid and care about things like that. So, yeah, my things are all set to the bare, bare minimum. You know what I wish we had? I wish we had a way to hide corpses like an EQ. You could just slash hide corpse all. I wish I had that. Get my four points here. Good. Sinister strikes. 600 damage. I guess our wizard took care of that. We're all really low on mana. Hmm. Well, Joppa, my performance is actually like really good. For me, this is buttery smooth. Uh, let me check. I have 135 FPS right now. It's it's just the stream that is lagging. Yeah, the rogue's awesome, Ghastly. You would love it. Goofy, I don't know, man. I'm like panned down, you know what I mean? Gasly, are you just tuning in or did you hear me talk about like the uh, the rogue stuff earlier? It is really good. The monks are awesome, too, though. Monks have like a bunch of uh, like sort of soft tanking abilities. If our if our uh, Dire Lord went down, our monk would be able to effectively tank these. Um, it'd be harder on the healer and it would get really dicey, but he has a bunch of like stuns and knockdown abilities and he's got mend, of course. So the monk is very tanky. I am very much a melee glass cannon. Once every five minutes, I could choose to not die. That's my option. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, OK. I mean, like, I'll mess with the settings here, but some of them might require a restart. Graphics here. 
as you can see, I've got everything like way down. Jack up my clip distance here. I'm not gonna mess with shadows. Um, change this to ultra. And I can add detail meshes. So now there's like grass and foliage and you can see the thread on the tent. Light effects from the torches. I don't think I can climb this fence. Oh, what? Yo, that was awesome, actually. OK, so you can see it's a little bright. With the current time of day, I think, but you can see way off in the distance, you can see that city over there. All this cool stuff, so. We have a padrium ore deposit over the fence here. Zavin, oh shit, Drizzle, thank you so much, man. I hear you talking trash, man. My group is complaining that I'm uh, talking more than attacking. All right, this is too much. I can't do it. We're going we're gonna to turn the weird. So again, I see the, the stream is choppy, but it's not happening for me at all. But we're going to jack all this stuff back down. I don't need any of this. I don't even know how I landed that that ledge grab. Beginner's luck, I suppose. Wall jump. Got it. There we go. Get swole, dude. My FPS right now, 120. It changes like, you know, depending on what I'm looking at. That's FD. Nice, you can climb along the edge. It is very fun to mess around with climbing. Can I climb this tree? I don't think I can climb the tree. I can't climb the tree yet. Can we can we pull this mob yet? I feel like we need to inch up, you know what I mean? So the a lot of the stuff behind us that we're fighting will be gone. I mean, if we go up and hug right, can we just like get two mobs? Yeah, look, there's my FPS. It's it's in the top left, right below the Pantheon icon up here. Who is this fielder? Can you get some game audio? The game audio is on. Let me turn it up once we're done moving this camp. Hug, 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 hug. Duck died. So yeah, we're trying to break in here, but it's it's pretty tough. Um, let me check with the audio again. You guys want to hear more game sounds? I can turn them up. There you go. Personally, I thought the game sounds were a little bit too loud, so mine are, are going to stay down. Let me know if you guys think these are too loud. Hmm. That could die heavy is about to aggro you guys, I think. He's pathing around the bottom.
this is not Black Rose Keep. This is just a, uh, I mean, for lack of a better term, this is kind of like a random Gadai encampment. This isn't like a special dungeon or anything. It's just a high level um, sort of ordinary bandit camp in this game. So gone are the days of three little tents with half elves standing outside them with bronze weapons. I'm coming down there. I'll climb back up. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that hurts. So we think there's no dice on that. You, oh, you couldn't hear any game sound? Huh. Let me check. I hope I don't have it like toggled off. You guys should be hearing that game sound like you should hear something when that spell hits. Turn it up again. You have to be hearing that. Hmm. You know what? Maybe it's an OBS. Let me. I bet I don't have a game source. Yeah, but that's it. Wave link game. Okay, it's gonna probably be loud at first. Yeah, there we go. Sorry about that. Amateur move. It's because I'm not a real streamer, folks. Let me know if that's too loud or if it's good. My group's over here, like, dying. Pirate, what should you play on Oakwind? Are you, when are you going to quit? Like, real talk, what expansion are you going to go to? Is that a mob on the outside, or is that a... No, it's a player. Name looked like it was red. I'm terrible. I'm terrible rogue. Have we seen many higher level mobs that roam areas? Um, yeah, we have. There's definitely a lot of roaming mobs. There's not too many that it's like overwhelming, but there's like a troll in this zone that's really high level. There's like a dragon in this zone that is really high level. Um, so yeah, there's definitely there are definitely some things. Yeah, that's a path on the outside. If you're going to quit Invelius, just play a monk. If you're going to stay longer than that, then don't play a monk because there's like 8,000 monks on every TLP server. The tank is a dire lord, yeah. Glorf. Glorf, do you remember what your bard main character name was on, uh, on Agnar? That is a lot of ads that could aggro us. He had some name that was not Glorf, but he was a bard main and faceless uh, empire. Queena, he was Queena. I got it, thank you. Arc Hunter, this is Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen. It's an upcoming uh, MMORPG that is currently in a pre-alpha state. Though, as you can see, uh, all things considered, it looks pretty dang good. Hopefully, this is just me. Hopefully, we see it in, a, in an alpha state pretty soon so that a lot more people will be able to come in and test it and play.
That's bad. I'll have a big nuke here in a second. He's just knocked down right now. There we go. Spawns behind us to the south, so you might want to move in tight. I have a crystal. Shuck, can you open trade with me while we're in combat? Oh, it's a cooldown on the item. We, we were just talking about cheesing the crystal mechanic here. I can't trade. I can trade this to him, but it doesn't matter because the cooldown is attached to the uh, to the item. Like because he's already had one. So. Monks down. Mentalists. Keep it missed. No, immediately breaking. Okay. We should be good. Just AE'd me, broke my stealth. Breadsticks, uh, they're fast, man. Like we can't get through this camp because it's respawning before we're uh, before we're ready to move on. Rip, missing a backstab. You know what's weird? I think the backstab timer is about the same, or maybe even faster than EQ's backstab, but something about seeing a big eight and watching it count down makes it feel slower. Hopefully, hopefully, that'd be pretty soon. Count says the back seems like it's a little bit narrow here. What is the electricity ability that stunned him like that? So when you saw him getting like stunned like that, that was a, an ability called brain freeze. It's pretty cool looking. Oh, sorry. It's called shock and awe, hence the electricity. It used to be the same effect as a spell called brain freeze, though. I forget what I was talking about before we saw that awesome ability. Do I have poison on my spear? No, but I use like this, this corrosive brew. I do have some poison I could use. Um, I mean, we'll use it, right? We're not going to play too much longer. Applying poison. Now I have a synthetic toxin on there. Who needs a crystal? My group's yelling at me because I don't know how to trade an item. Pop at the gate. What's back here? Um... I've got another two hours of streaming here. It is meant to be slow. So right now we have 2x EXP and I think we're at like um, 23, 20, probably now by, by 24 hours. So double EXP level 18 after 24 hours.
Okay, so hear me out. We could go up on this ledge by us, walk around the perimeter of the fence, and then climb the rock wall to jump over the fence. There's only one mob on this side. Why am I seeing these names? It gets us past all this shit. What's the dwarf starting zone called? Um, I don't know offhand, nerds. Anyone know what the the intended name for the dwarf home city is going to be? Kadasa. So there you go. Joppa said it. Kadasa. <laughs> yeah, North Kaladin. Yeah, it's meant to be slow. Uh, Joppa said, you know, a, a while back, Joppa gave us like some estimations of how slow they aim for it to be, and it's like next level. Let's see what our shadow planning does on this guy. Nice. It's gonna get me killed with all these crits. Max level, I think, is going to be 50, yeah. The highest, I want to say the highest we've ever been in, in pre-alpha is like 30, but that was a long time ago before the latest refactor. Biggs, what's the highest level we've ever had? 30? Yes, I guess they're saying 35, and that was back when we were able to grind in Black Rose Keep. There you go, Mr. Styles. You'll be able to uh, play in like the alpha with that, right? Or is that not alpha? Is that beta? Which one are we on, the monk? We think this might have been the golden pool, the one we need to give us access to the named mob. Yeah, we have a... So that is one thing for sure. The testing pace has increased a lot. We're getting like... Usually 30, I want to say like 36 hours of testing every month, which is pretty significant. Um, it, it used to be like, you know, in a year you might have a couple weeks where you were able to go in for like three hours at a time each week. But yeah, now the tests are pretty significant and lengthy and the game is very stable. I should knock on wood, right? I said it's stable, so now we'll crash. Backstab miss. Feels bad, man. You notice some of these are not memblering when they're missed. Oh, I was going to say earlier that what counts as behind the mob is relatively narrow. Like any Q, basically from this point, like his shoulder to his other shoulder is behind. But so far in Pantheon, it feels like behind is like where that blue stripe is. And I won't get like a thing that says, oh, you're not behind him. It doesn't work. I'll get like, I'll do like a quarter of the intended damage. 
So it's hard to say exactly, you know, like maybe you just had a bad roll on damage that time, or maybe you weren't actually behind the mob. As I understand it, the problem that existed in Pantheon before was they were using uh, basically a hodgepodge of different art assets from all over the place. And um, those assets all had all kinds of crazy different dependencies. And I'm, you know, I'm putting this in, in dumb people terms, right? Because I don't understand it. And the, the end result of all that was like a game where, that eventually became like non-functioning, right? You couldn't add anything else to it. So they had to do a refactor. Now everything is built, um, I want to say, with consistency. Like it's one smooth operation. So performance is pretty good. And they've expanded it a lot. Like this zone that we're in, Throne Fast, is so much bigger than it was when we first started pre-alpha testing, when we did like any content pre-refactor, basically. My number one gripe would be, okay, here is my biggest problem with Pantheon. You ready for it? My number one problem is that I can't play it more frequently. Whoa, did you see that run? Do you see that sprint? You want to tag him? Tag him, Glorf. Mess that caster. We're not, we're not going to kill this guy. I don't feel like this is going to happen, dudes. Can we uh, just go run and climb? He knocked me down. I need to get out of here. He did like an AOE knockdown. That is mean. That knockdown he used, Glorf, was an AOE. No chance. Uh, gear is tradable, yeah. I don't think we've had any no drop stuff yet. But I feel like that's just like the sort of thing that they can kind of add in last minute easily, right? The no drop tags, if there's items they want to make no drop. I don't think we've seen any drop, any no drop gear. He said, night, night. That reminds me. So my daughter recently did this thing. We were out playing and um, she was playing with like rocks. I don't know if you have like two year olds, right? They love to play with rocks. So she found some ants and she thinks ants are so cool. She loves them. But she had this rock in her hand and she goes up to the ant. And she's like, night, night bug, go to bed. And she just takes the rock and cr crushes the ant. And I think she thought she was like tucking it into bed. And that's what that guy just did to my group. Yeah, I mean, like, thinking about things that I don't like about Pantheon, when you're actually in the game and playing it, it's just really good the whole time. It's really fun. Some of the early levels, you know, are not super interactive. But I think about EQ, where, like, the early levels of EQ, you're just auto-attacking. Maybe you have kick. And it's definitely much more interactive than that. So I, I basically have nothing negative to say about it. I would like the balance to be a little bit different, but that's all just, like, fine-tuning stuff. I think generally, like, we tend to kill mobs a little bit too fast. Trying to do a little bit of a res exploit here, I think. Glorf just got smoked over there again.
Yeah, she sent him to sleep with the fishes. I think TTK, TTK feels a little too short. Like, this might seem fine, the mobs we're fighting right now, but consider the fact that, like, these mobs are, like, red to us. You know what I mean? That's orange. I think uh, light orange is, like, two levels higher than me. This guy heavy is three or four levels higher than me. And, like, reds are five levels higher than us. Some of the mobs that we've been killing in this stream have been level 24 and we're level 18. So if they're six levels higher than us, it should be a higher TT kill. Now, the problem is it's so hard to balance that because like you go in one direction and they die really easily. You go in the other direction and you can't even hit the mobs. You know what I mean? You have to dial it in so tightly and you have to keep like doing it over and over again for different mobs, different gear, different uh, level ranges. So... It seems tough. We've definitely come in here, not to this camp, but we've definitely come into the game sometimes and, and like it's tuned up and you're like, I can't kill anything. Like I'm getting destroyed by anything that's like one level higher than me. Or you're like uh, able to just like solo something that's like three levels higher than you. So finding that balance is tough. Look for the most defined edge on the rock when you're hold and hold shift. Oh, okay. See, job is teaching me how to not be bad. Do I feel like the climbing mechanic makes things a bit easier to cheese, therefore less dangerous? It's got pros and cons. The first thing I would say is that the climbing mechanic makes things more fun, which is the most important thing. It is extremely fun to mess around with climbing, uh, both just like coming up and getting a huge breathtaking view when my my clip isn't like turned down to the, the minimum. Um, seeing where you can climb because a lot of times you'll be like I wonder if I can climb there and you'll do all this crazy stuff to get to like the top of a random mountain and you'll find a chest up there. Like, you'll get a thing like this, the golden fief of travel, which lets me gate to my bind point. That's found by, like, climbing. Or check this out. So you have a whole other menu inventory for all your crafting stuff. I've got the fabled climbing rock splitter, which gives me plus 10 endurance and plus 10 strength. That plus 10 strength is on me even when I'm not, like, like right now, in, a, in my combat stance, I have plus 10 strength because I have that. That was, like, 20 straight minutes of climbing to get it, and 10 strength is huge. Look at my strength. I've got 37 strength with, with shaman buffs. Without shaman buffs, I probably have 30 strength or less than 30 strength. So like my DPS is primarily strength based. It's more, it's, it's kind of like probably a 25% increase in my DPS. Just having that, you know, there's other factors besides strength. Well, otherwise it would be a, a straight 33, but yeah, it's probably like a 25%. And that's all from climbing. You could do it at level one, but yeah, it does make it easier to drop aggro. Um, I don't know. It's just worth it. But despite all this climbing, you see that we still cannot make it past this fence over here. I mean, I think we I think we hit the next level and we climb around that back gate. There's way fewer mobs there. There's like six mobs between us and him. I mean, but but that said, I don't even know what we're going to do when we get to him, even if we have him perfectly solo, right? Mobs will hit you as you climb. If they can reach you, they'll cast spells on you if, if you're within spell range. Sometimes you climb up on a giant ledge and at the top of the ledge, there's just another mob there to kill you, so. Is that Frieza? Yes, Free Frieza right here. The problem for us right now is our tank is down. He's over there. I just did my uh, caltrops there. You can see them on the ground here. It makes the mobs that come through them snared. Hey, 
pet summon to all mobs. They, I don't think they climb yet. I haven't seen any mobs climb after us. For people who missed it earlier, though, like the mobs, some mobs do have like relatively, I don't know if complex is the right word. They have like in-depth AI, like the casters here. They have they have enchainers in this area. They always like prioritize mezzing your healer. They will, if you try to use a long duration spell or like a long cast spell, they will cast a spell on you called Hush and like interrupt your cast. If one of their friends is mezzed, they will break the mez with one of their spells. We don't see any of it here. Joppa, if he's in the chat, still could probably comment on it. But some areas have mobs with dispositions. I think almost every area except for this maybe right now has mobs with dispositions. So you'll see mobs that are like watchful, which means they have like longer aggro radiuses. They might go get help when you aggro them instead of just coming right to you. You'll see mobs that are like uh, frenzied, which means they just do a, a ton more damage. There's a, there's a bunch of different dispositions and generally they all make it more difficult. So even though you might fight like 10,000 Kadai Quick Blades, they're not all the same. Opimo, could they add shadows to the game? I could add shadows to the game. I could just change my shadow distance to not be bare minimum. But I wouldn't want to do it. Um, Hush, I don't know if it counts as a silence yet. I don't think our wizard has really gotten silenced very much. It's always our enchanter who gets it. I wish the two-handed spear animation was like the old school XR two-handed blunt animation where they, like, they drop it to their side pull it back and then like shove it forward. How about a hardcore mode from the start? Uh, I mean, that would be dope. It probably wouldn't be a hard ask to get them to add that before live. And um, I don't know, the game seems really hard right now. Compared to like EQ, like the odds of getting to the end without dying are incredibly slim. But we've had 20 years to optimize EQ versus like, you know, a thousand hours to play this, maybe. Probably less than a thousand. Good. Mm, I see Joppa. See, my group asked me if I was good, and all I heard was, you guys good? Like there was some kind of plan that happened before that, and I was just like, yeah, I'm good. Apparently the plan was to run over here. I didn't know what the plan was. That's not good. That monk dropped a crit on our monk and killed him. I don't think I think we could run to that spot and not have to gate or die. We're in visiting. Can we res them through the wall? I assume yes. Yeah, but they could just jump onto the ledge and then jump over. I think they're doing this all wrong, to be honest.
You know, the thing about stealth versus invis is my movement speed. Um, I don't think that the corpse dragging is implemented yet, no. I need to put everything on ultra and show up my FPS is. I don't know. D uh, do you, okay. As you command. Um, max all this out. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba. Oh, I'm already, apparently I was already on ultra. And I'll turn detail meshes on. Um, I think that's good. Yeah, so my FPS is 88, 90 right now. There's a lot of detail over here that is not captured. They do. Yeah, I think it does that thing where like uh, the level of detail is reduced on distant objects. It's a camp back here. Yeah, we could definitely, there's there's like four mobs over here. We could kill them and then just climb up into the back of the camp. Oh, oh. Gnome fights, what's going on? I love your your emoji there. There you go, Apimo. I just make it look like shit. Shadows. Oh, I turned shadows on. Okay, I gotta turn shadows off. I can't can't be playing with shadows around here. This might be a good opportunity for me to relog really quick. So right now, we decided since it's pretty challenging to get the corpses with both of our tanks dead, um, they might just try to climb back to us by scaling this wall. We're not sure if they'll have the endurance to do it, though. You got to do things like maybe on this lip, you could stop and rest for a second. Because even just like statically hanging on the wall, your endurance is dropping. Who's the group leader? All right, I'm going to camp really quick. We have been disconnected. Don't steal, uh, don't steal my username, folks. You guys get a little look at the character select screen. I'm sure most of you have seen that from other streams. Uh, Rekt, I have a 4070 Ti, I think. I mean, it's, it's just like any Q, right? Let's see what my FPS is doing right here. 125 FPS, like looking out at the world. Let's 
do I have on here? Detail meshes, kill that. They made it. I do not know if I'm in combat. You're not supposed to get aggro when you do that, Glorf. That's the trick. Uh, Trex Onmo, yeah, I am. Uh, I am the EverQuest Sade, if that's what you're asking. By the way, welcome to the stream. Um, set my V-Sync to V-Sync 2. Okay. V-Sync 2. I mean, my FPS is still good. I'm like well over 100 most of the time. There are two mobs standing right outside the gate right here that kind of blend into the uh, the background. A magician and a, and a heavy. They're both, um, I don't even know what this color is. The color of an orange peel. I suppose you would call that orange. Hey, good to see you, Vickus. Well, it, I think it would be like a misnomer to say that I streamed. I am a Twitch partner because I once streamed, but um, I don't know. This was just a rare opportunity that I had to showcase a game that I love. So here I am. It's hard to stream on, on EverQuest because I lead a guild on Mischief and it's like, um, there's just a lot of nonsense you have to deal with as a guild leader all the time. A lot of like random tells and like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to like entertain a chat and deal with 250 crying people and leading raids all at the same time. So for that reason, I haven't really streamed EQ in a long time. I'm glad. Are the game sounds too loud or are they fine? We, we don't need to come to the spot where Shuck and, and all of us are. Like, where you're at is a better place for us to be. Uh, but we would need you to invis us, Cynix. If you can invis, I'll just sneak over by myself now and you guys can handle this. Yeah. That's a touch loud. See, look at you guys. You guys should have told me a long time ago that it was a touch loud because I can edit it really easily. Stream down. Boom. All right, we'll see how it is now. Now it's going to be like too quiet. It's back. The climbing thing is very much dependent on player skill. Like if you group with someone who's really bad at climbing, it could be rough. It's like in, in EQ when you uh, play with that cleric who doesn't know how to hug a wall. Just imagine trying to get them to learn how to climb. Could we just go on this wall to the west and climb around them? See the ledge up there to the south? Like you, you climb to this west peak and then just go left. I mean, you could also just run over there, jump on the wall and climb straight up, right? Let me try this. We ultimately want to get on that that uh, ledge to the left above the camp. Can we handle a four pool? I mean, if we could take three, we should just kill him. It's no big deal, right? Yeah, we should do it then. It's just two heavies and quick blade.
this is the stuff that kills exp groups not like kills them but i mean like slows it down where everyone's trying to figure out what you want to do smart thing is just to stay where you can kill things and kill them until they don't give you exp anymore but we want to get at some of these named mobs to showcase diehards i tie a lot yes Can they get on this ledge up here? I can put down some caltrops to slow two of them down while uh, while we mess them. We have aggro on something. So that one just came around solo. No, we got a second. Two is good though. You guys couldn't hear it, but my, my group just said that Caltrops were nice, very clutch. See, I can do something right. Yeah, with Ultra, the spell effects even look a lot nicer. Backstab, yeah, that's definitely the side. 29 damage. For some reason, I'm only doing 29 damage to this when I backstab. I don't know what's up. Uh-oh. Joppa. Joppa, could I get a King's Reach Pike, sir? I don't know if that's something you'd be willing to do. I can't change my weapon while I'm in combat. Yeah, my mastery points. Um, where do I go? Boom. So right now I've got one banked. I'm about to get a second one. I put three into Blackjack Kick, which lets me get two opportunity when I use it. Blackjack Kick, I used to have to be on the side of the NPC to get opportunity, which was like... Which was not fun because I had to be like, here, then here, then here, then here the whole time. So that was uh, mastery points there. Attack this, I don't know why though, I'm not going to do anything to it. Uh, Shadow Walk, basically increase my movement speed with mastery points and I get more opportunity in a shorter amount of time. Sinister Strikes, increase my damage bonus. What else do I have? I used to, I used to use Waylay. That was just a, a damage increase and a cooldown reduction. Backstab, same thing. Cooldown reduction, damage increase. My next thing that I spend it on will be uh, Backstab Tier 3, which means when I use it, a lot of times I will immediately refresh Blackjack Kick, which gives me two more um, of my whatever it's called. Opportunity. You got me covered? Okay, heck yeah. Well, for now, I will... Uh... This is what I look like dual wielding. Yes, yeah, so my spear broke when I re-logged, it looked like. 
I think it is a bug that only affects certain crafted items. And this item, my spear is like a little bit out of the range of where gear we should be using right now. Because we have people focused crafting and we funneled everything to them. I mean, we should just move down here now, right? I don't think the ones on the fence will aggro through, right? So if we're on the other side, we should be good. I mean, this this heavy is a solo pull now. I'm gonna level up after like one or two more kills. I really love the knockdowns. Opportunity is, see these four like blue notches on my sword up here. That is my unique class uh, ability. It's like a currency, not currency. I don't know the resource. There we go. It's, it's my unique class resource. So I generate um, opportunity by sitting in stealth or by using blackjack kick right now. And I can spend it to use some of my abilities. Like this ability, Sinister Strikes, consumes whatever uh, whatever amount of opportunity point I have, and it increases my damage by 25% for each one it consumes. So if I've got four and it takes all of them, then I get uh, double damage. And that'll last for like 30 seconds. If I couple it with a big ability like, back, uh, like Backstab, I could do tremendous damage, like 800 damage. Did you level on that shuck? So we basically have like the equivalent of thought seize, like our enchanter can drain the mana out of this to gain his mana back. And since this is a magician, not a mentalist, which is an enchanter, she doesn't have a lot of good defense against it. A perfect target, in other words. Once I get my King's Reach Pike, we'll be back in business here. Is this lore? No. There we go. Level 19. Nothing. My next ability is at level 20. I get... Uh, Increases your sprint speed by 25% for six seconds. After this time, escape artist will activate automatically. So it's just like a really good escape tool. Oh my God. There's mobs up here. Brag road. Come up. He's by himself. It's easy kill. Oh my gosh, he snared me. Snare doesn't re doesn't affect his axis.
He's reset. I guess because we were at a location that he identified as unreachable. You are allowed to see it now. Make sure you note the uh, the little thing above my left chat window. Recording and streaming of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen requires explicit permission from Visionary Realms Incorporated. I'll mind this. Maybe. I don't have a pick. Oh, goodness. It's, it's Joppa. Boom. You loot this, boom. Chunk of ore. You guys can actually take it, I just showed them. Bleak Iron Dirk, 14 damage, 2 curse resistance, 1 charisma, 2 dexterity. 2.4 delay. Technically it is worse than my smash stick, which is 19 damage. It's faster. I don't know what curse resistance is going to be here. We'll see how that delay manifests. Spear technique. I'm not in combat. You guys just need to come down on the uh, ledge over here, the wooden ledge. Bigger, what's going on, dude? Good to see you. It's fun, but my group's in a bit of a tight spot here. I mean, what idiot had this plan, you know what I mean? It was my plan. Let's go take a look at Joppa while I'm snared. Goodness. It looks kind of like a dragon style gear, right? Where are they? They're down here. I can just take this drop, I think. I need a new plan, indeed.
Yeah, these two monks. We should just drop down and kill the two monks, right? Can we mez one from up here and then drop down and kill the non-mez? Are they going to come from underneath? land anything. Uh-oh. My dagger skill is bad. Here we go. You know what? I wonder if I can... Probably want to save it for backstab. Two more... Mastery though, I probably am not going to get it. So what I should put my mastery point in this shiv. Ambidextrous. Oh, I'm combat. I'll be able to increase the bonus I get from ambidextrous by a few percent. The bonus I get from Ambidextrous when I'm wielding a dagger in my offhand is haste, so it'll be a 2% haste bonus. Total of 8. He's done. Apply that mastery point now. Mastery. Yes. Got it. Let me see. Daggers max? Okay, <laughs> good. Chuck, do you, do you know if uh, our crafters can craft another spear? Okay, makes sense. Yeah, the consensus is that the time to transport the mats back and forth, it would be like the stream would be over by the time we made another spear. The combat so far i like it a lot it's it's really involved though so like i would imagine that it would be challenging to box legitimately at least because you're always able to do something you're, you're like always building up various resources if you if you want to go hard on your dps you're just like blowing cooldowns that reduce other cooldowns or give you more like endurance or give you more opportunity so there's like a, a big kind of like a workflow of rotations that you use 
not at all like EQ. I would say like auto attack is probably the smallest part of my damage. The dagger racial? I don't know what the dagger racial would be. I should get rid of this though. Fan of knives. It's too far away. Gosh, tap targeted the wrong one, man. Broke. Perfect timing, though. Yeah, they're dying fast, and this guy, like, here, he's only one level higher than me, so. Not terrible. We have one hour left in the stream. I think we can get that guy in an hour. This. There we go. this new ability that I assigned to my bar. Oh, no. Cal drops them. I thought Biggs was an ad, too. <laughs> this ability I have here, uh, Death Dealer, it does 150 to 200 percent of my weapon damage, and it does more damage if the target's at lower health. It scales to dex and intelligence, which is pretty cool. My intelligence is not the greatest, but my dex is awesome. Uh, Doug, there is a new boss that was put in like this morning. We're trying to get to him. We fought him one time and he pretty much shrecked our group instantly. Um, but we want to have round two. We had an ad last time and, you know, we weren't all up when we got him into the camp. So we think a clean attempt of 6v1, we could take them. Uh, this game is, is a DPS race, not FTE. Earlier, when we were in a more contested camp today, and the level gap was slightly closer between us and, and other groups, we had groups come into um, our camp area and try to take mobs, and we would just be able to DPS race. Yeah, Jasper, um, I did like a, a little bumbling walkthrough of the lore earlier. Yeah, we're going for the mountain, dude, but um, I'll go over it again in a, in a minute here. I like the rogue kit. It's really good.
There's just a lot you could do. A lot of innovative ways, ways to like link damage and do more damage. If you want to be really interactive with things. Um, I like the positional gameplay. I think that's kind of fun. I have a lot of things that can like reduce AC. I don't have any opportunity points to drop them. Man, my frame rate. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, cool little things that you could do to help the group out besides pure DPS too, so. What is with, why, why is like looking at this rock tanking my FPS? Um, I, I might be doing more damage now that I have like an, another line up here. But it definitely feels cooler using a fat two-handed spear. Do I think it releases in the next two, three years, Caltan? Honestly, I wouldn't even try to hazard a guess. It's like trying to predict like the Winds of Winter launch. Um, I think it'll be an alpha relatively soon. Like it feels, it feels like it's there. You know what I mean? When you play it, I, I don't know. I, I feel like... It just feels like a game, you know what I mean? It feels like it's doing everything it needs to do. And for like the last year, we've been limited to this zone. But I know there are more zones that are done because we've like expl exploited into them before and seen them. So I know there's more content than what has been revealed on streams. I'm probably going to have some VR assassins show up at my house for saying that. Um, but yeah, I mean... Even back when before the refactor, we were able to get into zones that had never been seen before by doing like some shenanigans as zone lines and stuff. So as far as I could tell, there has always been more content complete than has been shown. Um, I don't know about the Ranger. I don't know if the Ranger has ever been in. So I guess that's one of the things that, that is missing. Like we do not have every class in. We in some earlier tests we did have paladins. They were good. Paladins were like really good. When he passes over, can we tag him solo or what? Duck. We're waiting for mana to pull the named, and our casters are going over there and trying to mine that ore. Maybe I should use the reduction in accuracy trap on him. Place a trap for 60 seconds, emits a burst of light and sound when the first enemy approaches, stunning them for three seconds and disorienting them for 10 seconds, leaving them vulnerable to crowd control effects. Okay. I wonder if he'll just resist that. But yeah, I mean, like playing the game, it just feels great. It's it's pre alpha and it's testing. So you find bugs um, like every session you find a bug right to report. But that's to be expected. I find bugs every time I play EverQuest. It's been out for 25 years. We have a joke that we sometimes use when we find something dumb. Someone's like, why is it doing that in EverQuest? And, and we'll be like, EverQuest is a good game that has no bugs. And it's just like so far from the truth. Like recently EverQuest, which I love, by the way, I can't shill EverQuest enough. You should play it if you're waiting for Pantheon. Um, they did a UI update. And the, the UI update made it so every time you opened a bag, your entire screen flashed. I felt like I was playing Dragon Ball Z and like fighting Tien. He was hitting me with a solar flare. Oh my gosh. Something in that direction like really kills me. Yeah, these are the graphics like turned way down to uh, bigger. I 
can't drop two of these traps during combat, but I can drop one. Only Caltrops can drop during combat. Interesting. So we're gonna have more spawns now, right? We should fight them right, like right where Biggs is at right now. Or just FD. All right, chat. So we're about to try to get this boss right here. Jugo Mountain Pojax. He's going to go for our monk. Watch this dude sprint and truck bigs into the dirt. He opens up with like this, this charge attack. Okay, not this time. Are we not killing this heavy? I mean, we didn't even pull the the boss, so. I'm dead. Dunzo. Yeah, I mean, I just saw him standing by the rock, so I wasn't sure why we were aggroing the heavy at all. Like, just, it, it looked like it went poorly, so I thought we were just going to abandon it. Then we brought the heavy in, so I was like, yeah, okay. No, I mean, the the rest of us, we could have abandoned it by letting you just die there. I've got like half a bub of purple health. Save me. So what's up with feign death? Can I put caltrops in between you and the, the pool and then you can flop? Well, we have a solo pool now, folks. to check out the corpse there sound effects still far off i turned them down a little bit because some people thought they were loud maybe that's why well, that just seems like the smart play a bunch of mobs don't come up here What did all that add from? Uh, so it aggroed somebody on the rock. It's fun, man. have here recently revived okay
now seems like a good time to talk about the lore. Let's see. Uh, Jasper, are you still in chat? If you are, I'll do the lore. If you're not, then I, I will skip it. You are. Okay. Lore time then. So the world we're in is called Terminus. And there's a bunch of different races here. But none of the races are originally from here. There's a thing that I think it's called a collision. And um, it's sort of some kind of mysterious magical event. And when it happens, it brings a race to this land called Terminus. So that's how everyone has gotten here so far. Um, before that happened, the only race that I'm aware of, the dominant race at least, was the dragons. There were different factions of dragons, and they fought with one another. Should I be going somewhere or just waiting here? Okay. So... Um, one dragon was powerful enough to eventually defeat all the factions, unite everybody. And then he, you know, the dragons then just had total hegemony over the planet under the rule of this dragon. At some point, they all decided to just leave and uh, go to like various hidden places around the world. It was before the collisions began happening. It's believed that a thing, there was a deal that was made called the Dragon Accords, and it was made with uh, that that top dragon and some outside power. So when the collisions happen, I believe the the races that are brought here are separated from their pantheons. They're separated from their gods. We don't know exactly how or why, but it's believed that that's part of the deal in the Dragon Accords. So all these races come and they're able to live and, and more or less do their thing. Um, I think they are trying to understand how they came to be in this world of Terminus. And at one point there was a, another race that became known as the Revenants. They had a king that became a god king. He waged war against everybody. They had to build these, these giant sanctums to live in that were like magically protected so that he would not just completely eradicate all life. Eventually six war wizards came from somewhere, we don't know where, and they led the races in a battle against him. Somehow he got into conflict with that dragon king from before. They they found him and he went to that dragon king and, and there was a battle. Dragon king easily destroyed the god king, concluding what we call the deicide war. Now, when the dragon did that, he was also going to apparently destroy the other races, or at least it looked like he was going to do that. But then that mysterious being that we believe he made a deal with came and said like, hey, blood for blood, nothing was broken in the contract. And then the dragon backed off and we haven't seen him since. So there is some kind of deal that was reckoned between a powerful outside entity and the dragons that were here originally. And it seems to safeguard our presence here. Something has aggroed me. So that's that's most of like the, the background lore that I know. And I'm definitely not the most well versed in it. There's people who know well know it know it much better than I do. Um, if you want to look up the lore, I recommend a quick like 12 minute or six minute video by Bosgrim on YouTube. It's great. It goes over all that stuff, but uses all the correct names, has like graphics and you'll have a good understanding. We're going to drop down here, I think. Is Joppa like floating on an invisible broom? Joppa looks like he's like a witch riding a broom handle.
we want to go down here and try that whole process again. It feels so weird seeing everyone sit and I'm just like in this crouch position. What buff does Joppa have? Lantern light. You know, we could do uh probably get a solo hell tech here. It's true. Helen, you're not allowed to ask me that question, okay? Before 2030, what is it, 2023 right now? Um, I'm gonna bet yes. And if I'm wrong, then someone will ask me 2040 and I'll bet yes again, and I'll have no negative consequences. It does not have a, uh, it definitely doesn't have a chronotype system because like, you know, the game just isn't at that stage yet. There's, there's currency, like real currency, not real currency, but you know what I mean? There's like platinum, mithril, gold, silver, and copper. I don't think they intend to add any kind of chrono like system. Just, I think we should just drop right here by this tree. Oh, there's two right there, I guess. Can we just mez one from above? If we drop straight north, we can kill that mentalist there. We already did. It's on somebody. The reset. Uh, Mel Shuck is playing the enchanter. I don't know if you remember Shuck from Agnar. Ebs, does human actually have a graphic for that robe? No, that's a that's a item that he's wearing. We just aggroed a monk and a mage. Our enchainer's dead. When he was coming over here, that mentalist snared him. I'm gonna go down here. Which one are we on? anything what's the mob contention method in this game it's dps race ghastly what's going on hex i'll oh, back up i got res i should pay attention i thought i was down for the count Cool. 
still among the camp. I thought they were all dead because Biggs is using that same robe. Well, look, we cleared all that stuff, guys. Good job. Leveling has slowed down big time at 19, by the way. I'm just saying, like, we just killed four mobs, you know what I mean? And barely got not even close to 10%. Toosie, by the way, I'm, I'm glad you came in, even though it was your desire to not know anything about it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I like the downstate. It is really good. And you can like crawl and stuff too at a really slow rate. Heavy's pathing in. We have 35 minutes left. Will we be able to get this named mob? I'm leaning towards no. I'm starting to think that it's not going to happen. We probably need a few more levels, not even just to kill him, but to like carve out a path for us to get him by himself. Yo, Mortician's Crypt, what are you doing, dude? How's it going? What other traps do I have? Flash bomb. Um, I didn't realize there is a category for it, but honestly, this is probably better. I wonder if flash bomb would work. It reduces accuracy by 30% for 15 seconds. I don't know. It's probably five minutes. Cooldown is two minutes. This camp is the first time I've I've started to feel like our mana regen is really slow, you know? And by really slow, I mean good. Like, I felt like it was too fast before. Is it the Zynga poker chips noise? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Wizen Daggers is pretty good. Let's check it out. You know what would be good? If this list was sorted alphabetically. That's my, my number one feedback. Or let me sort it. Right. Time's up. Uh-oh. Where'd my... I don't know where my hot buttons went. Is there is there a button that turns off all of your your hotkeys? My hot bar is like reset.
Oh, it's literally because I tabbed in my book to harvesting. That's crazy. I have feedback that that should not do that. Ooh. Time to die. I'm gonna wait six seconds for this to be off cooldown. Watch him do a backflip right as I pop it. Death Dealer. Pretty McTeague. Uh, my plans for Oakwind are to watch from afar. I'm not going to play Oakwind at all. I couldn't get the time off or like the childcare that would be necessary to uh, go hard on it for like launch. I definitely never planned to do a guild or anything big though. If anything, I would have raced to 50 and just bounced. Um, there isn't. We don't. I don't think we have a log file either, so I can't really tell. But I mean, like, we compare notes, so to speak, and you have an idea of who's like the best DPS. Right now, I think it's monk, rogue, wizard for our DPS classes. I might be out DPSing the monk. Well, I might out DPS him if I was not playing like crap. Stunned. Yeah, sorry about that, Mel. I'm sure we would have won, Mel. Don't worry. Paul, I don't know that I can trust you. Enchanter, Cleric, Bard only. That's a good combo. I mean, Enchanter, Cleric, obviously, like, classic combo. And then having the Bard there, uh, basically nice just for Cellos, Mana Song and stuff. Yeah, this is definitely the way to do it. Like trying to hug the wall and sneak around was not as clean as this. Mm, all of our respawns have been like the low level spawns. So we're cleaning through it a little faster, not losing as much mana. It's getting dicey. Fiery explosion. Something about looking at that wall just crushes my FPS. So strange. Um, I guess maybe they're new. Honestly, I don't know if they're new. 
I feel like they've these have been the human models we've had for a while. Yeah, Mel. So let me talk about it really quick. I am a rogue. Kumu is a shaman. Glorf is a dire lord, aka Shadow Knight. Biggs is a monk. Shucklighter is an enchanter, and Xenix is a wizard. We're pretty much guaranteed to get that heavy on the right. Is that basically what we're dealing with? You want me to put Caltrops between us so it'll come slow and get mezzed? And also, are we able to mez lock it? Because it seems like we can only get like one mez cycle on something before it, it you know. Okay. Yeah, Mufasa, I'll put this on YouTube. Unless the powers that be dictate that I cannot do it. So we have 25 minutes left. For those who are just tuning in, there's a boss right there walking around. He just got added today, brand new. We're trying to get that, that world first. Boss kill. Really, it's like a named kill. It's probably like the equivalent of like Emperor Crush. Let's go for the mic come solo. Yeah, Shaman is really good. Yeah, we. I mean, I could root it for 60 seconds, but then, like, this fight is going to be long, you know what I mean? It assumes it doesn't resist, too. We have variable respawns, by the way, so we can never be like, oh, in three minutes, this will spawn. Here we go. We're, we're attempting a solo pull here. If we get more than... Oh, beautiful. Gotta stay real tight so we don't get any bullshit ads. We should all move in a little bit tighter. Yeah, don't come that tight. Is this 24 seconds? We all just got knocked down. Good timing on the stun, dude. So we hit him with our stun right after he did his AE stun on us. I have here. I'll wait for one more kick, then I'll punch this. Kick. 200. Not good damage. We're doing it. Our tanks, our tanks down. Can I get a res? Let me, let me see what the loot is, yo. Heavy iron claymore, 34 physical damage, great blade weapon. Woo. GG. Now we have time to go get uh, Homegirl up here. Let's do it. We think climb is the way to do that.
No, that was a that was a good item, relatively speaking. It just wasn't like a stat item. It was a it was a big beefy two hand damage item. Another win for Faceless. It feels good, man, after trying that for like an hour. Okay, so this is the next boss we're going for right here. Hell Tick. She's basically, uh, what is attacking us? We're like, she's like number two in the Pharaoh clan. Her exact relationship with the leader of the Pharaoh clan is not, is not, uh, known to us. Sister, girlfriend, wife, side, side chick. Thanks, Joppa. Shuck, was it you who hit the uh, the brain f the the shock and awe? Dude, the timing on that was so good when he did his AE, and then you shock and autumn until we were back up. Not nah, take the credit. Oh hey, Kuvani, what's going on? Good to see you here. Did I get raided? I have like all alerts off right now, so if I did, I should thank you. So thank you. Flint ROI, what's going on, dude? I'm glad that he did the charge attack that time, too. Is that charge a knockdown as well? Uh, okay. Well, I don't stream often, but I'm glad that you got to check it out. Folks in chat, Kuvani is an EverQuest streamer. She does stream often, so check her stream out. I've been great. Living the good life, so to speak. Mischief's a lot of fun. I should start streaming more. Getting ready to start raising funds for Extra Life for this year's Dark Paw Games uh, Extra Life thing. Our goal this year is to raise twenty thousand dollars. I think we were at like twelve or something last year. Because it goes up so slowly. Nice, that is cool. Yeah, I saw Niente streaming last year, which was cool. Duck says that the reason he gets mana so slowly is because he's usually standing. He forgets to sit down. <laughs> I mean, it looks like we just have two statics and she passed, right? We could probably get this guy the quick way by himself. Oh, I see this one. I think I have aggro. Okay, cool. Oh, we did a lot of climbing earlier. The climbing is really one of the best parts. It sounds stupid, but it is incredibly fun. There's all kinds of crazy things you could do with climbing, like whole mountains that you could just get to the top of if you're smart about how you climb and manage your resources. Nice. what the threshold is on like when this hits max damage for death dealer
I have my snare up then. Yeah, they're down now. That was awesome. Why does Mom's HP bar keep changing from green to red? I actually don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure offhand. Yeah, you can keybind macros. Uh, check this out. Boom. There's like a whole macros window that I'm not really using because it doesn't matter. But I imagine later on with clickies and everything, it gets pretty worthwhile. So what do we think caused that? When this resets, we actually might be able to get a clean jump onto that platform up there anyway. Uh, we got too close to the edge, aggroed the mobs here, and they ran through the fort up the stairs. Heavy's missed. Oh, Vault Boy, what's going on, dude? Good to see you. Um, he's using it, so I, I, it must be some degree of upgrade. Trying to hug the wall and be behind the mob is real good. Oh, yeah, it's, I mean... I, I've hit over like 800 when I had the two-handed spear, but like relative to their HP, you know what I mean? It's still normal-ish. Is the climbing as good as spamming the jump button and fall out trying to... It's way it's way better than that, Vault Boy. I, I do appreciate the, the thought, though. Can we grab one of the corner ones or the wall one while she's... It looks like it worked beautifully. Shit. We have 12 minutes left, by the way. You know, Joppa, if you guys permit me to continue streaming, I will. I don't have a time limit. Can we just grab him right there? Is he not going to aggro because he's in like a reset loop? There we go. Glad to see we made a believer out of you. We need to wait for her to pass to her furthest point to get the last ad in her room. We're probably going to have that static respawn soon, too. I'm glad you guys are liking it. Check out that pledge page.
I mean, I really can't say enough about how fun the gameplay is. It's just a good, fun game to play. You just want to jump up and get her, or you want to pull her? Okay, let's let's do it. She's solo. I mean, if we just jump over and fight her there, we won't have to deal with that, right? Is there is there a compelling reason not to rush her spawn point? But we know shit will come through the floor if we pull her across the... I mean, we could go up right now without aggro, right? He didn't recast her damage shield this time. Thunder. So good. I did the rogue stun. He has the wizard stay, 14 damage, 10 mana. Requires level 20. Rip. That is her bad drop. Hey, Jaffa, for like the last five minutes, could you teleport us to like uh, the dragon? After we kill this mob? If you can't, I get it. But I know we don't naturally have time to get there. What's up with the with the vanish into long combat pauses? Oh, this the shadow walk. Yeah. So when I'm shadow walking, it builds up my my class specific resource called opportunity. When I have enough opportunity, I can use sinister strikes to significantly increase my damage on uh, certain hits. And also coming out of the the hiding phase into the, the damage of like backstab is going to be better damage. Mining. Drop summoning us. Sweet. Oh my goodness, I hit a, I hit a zone line. We only have seven minutes. Where what direction will we be in? Here we go, boys. We have Spirit of Wolf on, by the way. I think I have my clip turned like way down too. Yeah. I haven't been in this area before uh, on this session, so I don't think any of this is cached or anything. No, it's not called. It's called um, Wind Strider. 
Hey, there he is. This isn't even the dragon that we were thinking of. This is this is a new one, right? Ergos, the Watcher. Yeah, this is a new M uh, EQ like MMO. Yeah, the thing about the zone line is uh, Pantheon. I am pretty sure doesn't actually have zone lines in it. It's like um one big world it probably gave me a loading screen because i was summoned like super far away you know what i mean so it didn't have time to like do its uh procedural loading so we should go for it right that's what i want to happen to yeah all right so we're gonna met up and then we're gonna give this a shot before we wrap up the stream That's true. It is a wyvern, right? Because it doesn't have front paws. It only has wings. Chat has identified that this is a wyvern, not a dragon, because it doesn't have uh, four legs. Um, Camped off. We got to level 19. We definitely could have got 20 if we focused on EXP a little bit more, but we spent like the last hour and a half trying to get to two bosses that we killed. One of them was uh, the first time it's ever been killed. And now we are going to get killed by this dragon in a moment. God. Can I hit him? My my frame rate missing. Down. His auto attack, 406. Yeah, I didn't hit him one time. I missed every attack. He's stuck in the tree. It's time to exploit. He has broken free. He looks pretty good, man. Jabba, thanks for taking us here. This was great. Yeah, that's why I figured it was something like that. Do not mind me. Just sneaky, sneaky. Dead again. That's okay. All right, chat, we're in our last minute here. This was awesome. I had a ton of fun streaming. So thanks to Visionary Realms and all of the Pantheon staff for giving me the opportunity. This was really great. I hope you all have enjoyed the stream. I thought I hope you, you know, have a different perspective on, on what Pantheon is. Hopefully it seems a little bit less like vaporware or whatever negative sentiment you had for it before. You see that there is a game. It is big. There is a lot of fun to be had in the gameplay. There is depth to the systems and it is just a wonderful time to do it. 
Um, so I look forward to eventually playing with all of you in alpha or later testing stages or in the live content release. It's been totally awesome. I had so much fun. Thank you, Joppa, for helping us in some tough spots there. Glad to get that uh, first kill for that new boss. Glad to show you this awesome dragon. And remember, the game is further along, looks better, plays better, and is a lot more fun than you probably thought. So hope to see you checking it out. And with that, Zade out. <laughs>